Alright, <clears throat> I have a requested video here. Thank you for requesting this. I do like this example. Um, I think personally that this, again, uh, as I've said in other videos, <clears throat> this is a question which is, in my opinion, comparable to an exam question. So you should be thinking, what I mean by that is, this is fair game. This is a fair game question, I would say. Um, here are the important details that I've listed here. Of course, as usual, read the question five to a hundred times, right? As always. Um, here's my random variable, capital X, the number of trials until a two is rolled. For you exam P experts or just individuals with a thorough foundation in probability, you probably recognize what type of random variable this is. I'm gonna put something underneath it to help you see. Let's see, I'm gonna put, this is a lot like the number of trials, the number of trials until uh, first success. So I put that there to sort of indicate that this random variable X falls into a general type of random variable, which we um, identify as sort of one of the well-known distributions. I'm not even going to say it right now, but I will mention it that towards the end. But for you uh, watching this who are familiar with all of the well-known distributions, specifically discrete distributions, you recognize this. You say, Oh, I know exactly what's going on. I can answer this pretty much immediately. Let me go through this. Uh, how would you go through this if maybe you didn't? Okay. And I think some of you guys get annoyed with me, but uh, whatever. Just be patient. If you want to fast forward, fast forward. But um, it's all good. It's all good. I'm trying to give you a, a thorough understanding. And also, I, I want to go through this so that you see sometimes in an exam situation, you may just have to sort of take baby steps and think through it slowly and arrive at something uh, that you can actually work with. So let me show you what I mean. Um, the question is to find this. I want to find the smallest member of my random variable capital X, let's call it little x, such that the probability x is less than or equal to x is greater than a half. Now, something just to mention, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not mentioning what, exactly what the special uh, distribution, uh, distribution is of x, but this right here, just this quantity, you should be thinking, is this something I'm typically concerned with? Absolutely. This is a CDF, right? This is a CDF uh, of X. Whatever my random variable X is, that's the cumulative distribution function, correct? Yeah. Now, let's take some baby steps and let's actually see, let's arrive at what distribution this is. So baby steps. Uh, first thing is, let's just say X is one. And by the way, it's not a bad idea to write this down. What type of values can X be? What type of values can X be? So you should be thinking, well, when can I get a success? When can I get a two? Well, I better or at least rolled it once. So X could be one. It could have taken one roll to arrive at two. It could have taken two rolls. It could have taken three rolls. It could have theoretically taken a million rolls, right? Maybe I don't roll a two until the millionth roll. So I put dot, dot, dot there. Those are the values that my random variable X can take on. Now let's look at the individual probabilities here, okay? So sort of case one, case one, what if X is one? I'm just gonna look at that probability. If X is one, then what does this say? What is the probability that x is less than or equal to 1? So again, uh, sorry, I set, I'm setting equal to little x equals 1. So I've replaced little x with 1. I'm just going to compute this probability. Again, I'm just sort of getting a feel for what's going on here. Maybe I can, you know, make some nice conclusions about my little examples here, right? This is equal to, well, 1 is the smallest value of my random variable x. So this must just be probability x is 1. And we know what that is because I'm rolling a fair die. Well, I'm assuming it's fair. And to roll a two, we have a one six probability of that happening. All right, how about if X is equal to two? All right, let's set uh, 
the quantity we're interested in, namely this probability, this CDF, where little x is 2. How could capital X, the random variable, be less than or equal to 2? Well, just using basically fundamentals of probability, this says that the probability of x is equal to 1, or the probability of x is equal to 2. Now, I'm not subtracting the probability that x is 1 and 2, because that's impossible, right? These are disjoint, right? These are actually, these trials are independent, and they cannot happen simultaneously. So, probability x is less than or equal to 2, x is either 1, it either takes one roll to achieve a 2, or it takes two rolls to achieve a 2. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, what are these values? So, how do I get a 1? Well, that means I immediately rolled a 2 uh, on the first one. Uh, how do I get a 2? How would that happen? That would mean my very first roll is not a 2. There's a 5, 6 chance of that happening. And the, uh, the next roll is a 2. So I'm putting multiplication. Because think about what you're saying here. These are independent events. The first roll is not a 2. And the second one is a 2. Right? So times 1, 6. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Um, one of the things that you need to know, like the back of your hand, for the first two preliminary exams, is the formula for a geometric sum, a geometric series, finite and infinite. Um, and hopefully that gives you an idea of what kind of distribution this is. Hmm, geometric series. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. This is equal to 1, 6. I factored out 1, 6. Okay. 1 minus 5 over 6 squared over 1 minus uh, 5, 6. If you have no idea how I came up with that, review geometric series. I claim that this is equal to this. What is this equal to? This is equal to, look at the cancellation, 1 minus 5, 6 is a 6, cancels there. This is 1 minus 5 over 6 squared. So take a look at what we have here. The probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is 1 minus 5, 6 to the 2. 2, 2. Hmm. All right. Let's do one more. How about if x is 3? What if x is equal to 3? Uh, that would imply that according to the inequality, my original inequality I'm looking at here, uh, probability that x is less than or equal to 3, how can this happen? Well, this must be, we must have either x is 1 or x is 2 or x is 3. Compute these individually and think about it carefully. How could I get uh, x1? What we're saying here is that basically the number of rolls to I roll 2 is just 1. That means I get a 2 in my very first roll, so that's 1, 6. Now, I don't get a 2 in my first roll, but I do get a 2 on my second roll. So not a... Uh, I guess I should reverse these. It's really the same thing as multiplication is commutative. I'll um, just leave it, right? First roll is not a, not a 2. Second roll is a 2. Or the first two rolls are not a 2. And the third roll is a 2. So hopefully this is clear to you, right? Uh, let me just change the order because this is going to drive me crazy. I don't know. I get whatever. I'm just going to change that order real quick. Hopefully this is clear. The first roll, this is probability x is 2. The first one's not a 2. The second one is a 2. This says the first two are not 2. The third one is a 2. Use your geometric series, finite geometric series, to write this down. Uh, this is equal to, uh, this is equal to, uh, I'm going to factor out 1, 6. Well, let me just write it. Convince yourself. 1 minus 5, 6 cubed. I claim that there's 1 minus 5, 6 cubed. Guys and girls, review, I'm telling you, understand the geometric sum like the back of your hand, like the back of your hand. Kind of a stupid saying. I'm going to go off on a little tangent real quick. Who even really knows what the back of the hand looks like? I mean, when do you look at it? Whatever. Know the geometric series, finite and infinite, very well. Trust me on this, all right? 
Trust me on this. All right. But look at this. Look at what we have here. We've gone through our little trials, our, our little experiment to see what's going on. Now I'm ready to write this in general. I'm absolutely ready for that because now I can answer this question. And I know some of you are just shaking your head. God, this guy takes forever. Why doesn't he just write down the CDF to begin with? I mean, what a pain in the ass, right? What a just a pain. Well, I'm getting to it now. I'm getting to it now. I like to go about things in a very logical, deductive way, okay? I'm a math major. I like to write proofs. I like that sort of thing. So, here's the deal. Here's the deal. What is, so hence, or therefore, either way, hence, the probability that my random variable x is less than or equal to x, based off what I just said, we just went through this, this x must be corresponding to the power of 5, 6. This is the CDF of a geometric random variable, number of trials to the first success, with p equals 1, 6, right? Probability of success, probability 2 is 1, 6. This is the geometric P CDF. This is the geometric CDF. If you recognize this from the beginning, which if you are, if you feel you're prepared for this exam, exam P, you should be from the beginning, you should say, this is geometric, done. And I just go with it. Now, if not, it's fine. If everyone has to start somewhere, and when I started, I didn't recognize this immediately. But again, I mean, I showed you all the papers I, I went through. You have, so you need to have so much practice on this kind of thing that you just recognize this immediately, immediately. Now, what is the inequality we're looking at? All right, so we need to find smallest x such that this inequality holds, such that uh, one minus five over six to the x is greater than or equal to a half, right? Here's my probability x, capital X, less than or equal to x. I've substituted it here. We're interested in solving this inequality. Let's do it. We can do it. No big deal, right? There is one little subtlety that I hope you catch. When you get x by itself, I think what I'll do is I'll bring the 5, 6 to the x to this side, bring the half over here. This is equivalent, equivalent to saying 1 half is greater than or equal to 5 over 6 to the x. Now you should be saying to yourself, yes, we can take the natural log of both sides. Let's do that. This tells me, do this carefully though, be careful. Ln of a half is greater than or equal to x ln of 5, 6. We're almost there. I'm going to isolate x by dividing by ln 5, 6. Is there anything I should be aware of when I do that? Hmm. You guys are on an above, I'll just say above average math level. Natural log should be like your friend. You should know if I take the natural log of a fraction, that is a number between zero and one, it's a negative number. Therefore, when I divide by natural log of five, six, I need to switch the inequality. Very good. I'm glad that I was just telling you that, but you were, you know, jumping out of your seat because you're just like, of course I know that, this is obvious, right? Good, so this is ln of a half divided by ln of five, six is less than or equal to x. I change the inequality, you have to change it because ln, I'm dividing by ln five, six, ln five, six is negative. Now get this handy dandy thing, and actually I computed this a moment ago, hopefully you can see that. I just computed ln of a half divided by ln 5, 6. That's the only thing I need the calculator for. Um, so this tells me, this tells me that uh, 3.8, 3.8 is less than or equal to x. We want the smallest value of x, which makes this true. The smallest x, which means we better choose 4. So in conclusion, x is 4. All right, hope you found this useful and you did not get too aggravated with me and my details.
I like the details. Much details are very important. I believe when you're learning and when you're studying for anything related to math, just my opinion, I recommend you fill in details to avoid little silly mistakes.